everyone is pretty familiar with this in Fortnite. Everyone's basis for a smooth gameplay experience are on these numbers. But what if I tell you that these numbers doesn't matter at all? And I'm going to explain why. Happy New Year everyone and welcome back to the Overseer PC. Now I've been creating a lot of PC hardware benchmarking content based on real world gameplay for quite some time now. And a lot of you guys have been asking me why your setup has these FPS dips in Fortnite and this made you feel like it's not smooth at all. I have tried to explain this every time but I kept getting asked the same question and over and over. So I looked at YouTube and I couldn't find any Fortnite content creator which actually expounded on this concept. Most information about this and even input latency are lacking and sometimes misleading. And to be fair to our Fortnite content creators, they are good players in the game, but I think they only understand basic technical concepts like FPS, but not too much on other in-depth technical variables. So I figured that this may be the time that I actually need to make a video about this. And if this video has helped you understand some things, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel guys. It's totally free and this helps us a lot. Okay, let's start with the FPS counter. So it has three numbers, your current FPS and the next two values are your minimum FPS and the maximum FPS. Most people would cap their FPS to sort of reduce input latency or lag and this is correct. And I know there are a lot of Fortnite videos out there about input delay, but these videos are nothing more than graphic or PC optimization guides, basically just to get more FPS. Now FPS is just one part of the equation for input delay. If you really want to know what input delay is, you actually need specialized hardware and specific testing methodology to do this. Look up these videos here by Tech Your City and Bell Nonsense if you want to learn more about input delay. It was actually from these videos where I ended up using DX12 as my main API when playing Fortnite. Anyway, going back to the FPS counter, so most people want to achieve 240 minimum and 240 maximum values, basically to have that sense that it is stable. But the reality is this isn't as stable as you think it is. These numbers are actually misleading. Enter frame times. So what is frame times? This is the time difference between each specific frame. So for example, if you want to achieve constant 240 FPS, that would mean for every second it would have 240 frames, right? So if we have one second divided by 240 FPS times 1000 to make it as a millisecond, we would have 4.16 milliseconds of frame time. In our loading screen, which is capped at 120 FPS, it should be 8.33 milliseconds, right? Right? But hey, let's look at our trusty frame time charts from MSI Afterburner and boom, it's not consistent. It never is. Most people think that when they have 240 minimum and maximum, they would immediately assume that it is consistent. It is not, because minimum and maximum frames does not show the real picture. People assume when they see this, it would mean this, but in reality, it is this. The frame output from your PC are never consistent, but we try to do multiple things to make it more consistent, such as increasing your FPS, which increases your response time capping your FPS, which creates a stable environment by limiting your system's maximum output and therefore can contribute to more consistent results. Stable frame times, which increases your precision. Take note, I said precision, not accuracy. Precision is basically when you hit the same mark over and over. If your frame times are stable, your muscle memory becomes consistent. Stabilizing frame times increases precision because your reflexes gets used to the same spot over and over, meaning you are less likely to miss those critical shots provided that you have a good aim. Minimum and maximum frame rates are just individual frames on a specific benchmark or gameplay run. These metrics are unreliable and does not show the real picture because it is just a single frame 
in a set of frames. Back in my early PC days, we used to refer to these things a lot, not knowing that these metrics did not actually have any specific purpose. We kept referring to these ones for more than a decade and it was only like a few years back wherein 1% lows and 0.1% lows were established to replace minimum FPS and benchmarking, which were essentially based off frame times. Now you can look up Bitwit's video over here for more detailed explanation on frame times. And this is the reason why PC benchmarkers like myself do not use minimum and maximum FPS. Frame times is a much more important metric if you are after stability. It is however harder to measure and this is why I've left my frame time graph turned on most of the time. Yes guys, I have this turned on 80% of the time. Why do you ask? Well, I've always dreamt of being like a cyan with a Geiger counter. And this is the closest thing I could ever get myself into. Seriously though, I have this on so that I will know if I do get fragged, I'll know if it was because of my PC or maybe I just suck and I couldn't blame my PC. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. If you're interested in stability tests with different PC configurations and Fortnite using different APIs, the X11, the X12 and performance mode, I have started making those videos here. The first one I've published so far is using a Ryzen CPU with an Nvidia RTX card. I'll be using different configurations later on, Intel um, CPU with an AMD GPU, AMD CPU with an AMD GPU and you know, so if you like those ones, please do subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.